NASA just dropped another alert about 3i Atlas. And I need you to remember this because it's easy to miss. This time, the first warning didn't come from the images. It came from the orbit. And that's where things get uncomfortable because when a comet's orbit starts talking back, it usually means something on the nucleus changed before our eyes even catch up. In a second, I'm going to show you why two totally separate teams using totally separate data ended up with the same conclusion. And once you see it, you'll understand why observatories are tightening their watch. But first, here's what happened overnight. A global network of tracking stations fed in a fresh batch of precise position measurements. Same telescopes, same target, same reduction pipeline. Nothing about the observing process changed. And yet, when those positions were plugged into the orbit solver, the fit started to break. Not violently, not dramatically, just enough to set off alarms in the math. The residuals went weird. If you've never heard that term, residuals are the tiny differences between where the model says 3i Atlas should be and where it actually appears in the sky. In a perfect world, residuals are zero. In the real world, they're always there. But they're supposed to be random, small, scattershot, like noise. That's not what happened. They aligned. They formed a pattern, and the whole pattern leaned in a new direction. That's the moment gravity stops being the whole story. Because if 3i Atlas were a dead rock, asteroid style, gravity would be enough. Sun pulls, planets tug. You predict the position precisely. But 3i Atlas is active. It vents gas. It throws dust. It runs jets. And every time material shoots out one way, the nucleus gets pushed the other way. That push is the non-gravitational force, a tiny rocket engine built out of sunlight and ice. And up until yesterday, we thought we had that engine pretty well characterized. Direction, known. Strength, roughly known. Orbit solutions, stable enough. Today, they weren't. To make the new observations fit, the solver had to tilt the non-gravitational push. Not a huge rotation, but big enough to matter. Big enough that the math refuses to close without it. So the first clue is this. The net thrust vector rotated. Now hold that thought. Because here's where it gets eerie. While the orbit team was still arguing with the numbers, the imaging team finished processing a completely separate data set. No orbit fitting. No residuals just stacked exposures from multiple observatories to build high contrast views of the inner coma. And the images told the same story. Last week, the inner coma and the main jet looked stable, like a configuration you could trust. Like, okay, this is how it's venting right now. Today, it isn't. The inner coma, the bright fuzzy region close to the nucleus, is skewed differently. The brightest part of the glow moved, and the main jet, the dominant stream of material, tilted. It's leaning in a new direction compared to last week, but it doesn't stop there. Secondary features rebalance too? Smaller fans, side streams. Even the tail picks up a subtle S-curve that wasn't there earlier, like the whole system twisted slightly. So now you have two independent lines of evidence. The orbit says the net force rotated. The images show the jets rotated with it. That's not a processing error. That's not coincidence. That's a physical change happening right now. And once you accept that, the real question becomes unavoidable. Why does this keep happening? Because whatever is driving these changes is inside the nucleus. And we can't see inside the nucleus. Not directly. We can only infer it from the way it pushes itself through space. So here's the core of it. A comet nucleus is not a solid boulder. It's more like a fragile pile of frozen rubble, a dirty, weakly held together body, dark crust on the outside, radiation processed organics, and underneath, layers and pockets of volatile ices, water, CO2, carbon monoxide, dust and rocky grains trapped through it all. As it warms, those ices sublimate, solid to gas. But not evenly. Sunlight heats one side at a time. The crust doesn't conduct heat well, so the energy sinks downward slowly, 
and pressure builds until something breaks. A crack opens, a weak spot fails, a vent blows, and a jet erupts, gas and dust blasting out at hundreds of meters per second. Now 3i Atlas is likely a patchwork. Sealed fractures, frozen over vents, volatile pockets at different depths, randomness everywhere. And for months, it looked like one dominant vent, or group of vents, was doing most of the work. One major fracture, steady venting, a consistent dominant jet, which is why the non-gravitational push seemed consistent too. But this object has been heating and cooling for months, and the deep interior is still catching up. So what changed? There are two explanations, both fit, and the scary part is, they can both be true at the same time. Option one, a new vent opened. A buried pocket of volatile ice finally hit its breaking point. Pressure built, burst through, a new jet came online in a different region. If that new jet is strong enough, it can rival or overpower the old one. And the moment that happens, the net push rotates. The orbit changes. The images reorganize. Exactly what we're seeing now. Option two, no new vent at all. Just a change in how the nucleus spins. Jets don't just push, they twist. They apply torque, tiny twisting forces that add up over thousands of rotations. And we already know 3i Atlas isn't rotating cleanly. It's likely tumbling or precessing, wobbling like a tilted top. If the spin axis is wobbling, then the vents don't need to move for the thrust direction to shift because the whole nucleus is changing orientation in space. So today's rotated thrust vector could be another step in that wobble. Same vents, different pointing. And again, real life is messy. It could be both. New vent activity, plus a changing spin state. Now here's the open loop you need to keep in mind. Every time the thrust direction changes, stress changes inside the nucleus. And this nucleus is not strong. It's a loose pile, weak cohesion, weak gravity, barely holding itself together. When a jet intensifies in one area, it removes mass. That changes the mass distribution. That changes internal balance. Cracks that were stable under one stress regime get pulled under another. Cavities compress, surfaces weaken. In the short term, it looks like cool dynamics. In the long term, this is how comets sometimes die. We've seen this pattern with solar system comets. Subtle evolution in non-gravitational forces, changing jets, spin rates creeping, and then, sometimes without warning, breakup. Split into chunks, or disintegrate into a cloud of fragments and dust. To be clear, NASA isn't saying that's about to happen. The language stays careful. Updated orbital solution. Measurable evolution in outgassing direction. Shift in net non-gravitational acceleration. But let's be honest about one thing. You don't push for denser measurements. You don't schedule extra telescope time. Because you think the story is over. You do it because you think something might be developing something you don't want to miss. So here's the bottom line. 3II Atlas is not coasting peacefully away on a fixed trajectory. It's still active, still venting, still adjusting its own motion. Layer by layer, vent by vent, rotation by rotation, day by day. Maybe it stabilizes. Maybe it settles into one final configuration and fades as it exits. Or maybe it keeps shifting and stress keeps building. And one day, one more vent or one more wobble pushes it past what the nucleus can tolerate. And that's the question hanging in the air right now. Are we watching 3i Atlas adapt or unravel? Because if the next alert says the thrust vector rotated again and the next images show another reorganization, then the small changes aren't small anymore. They're steps toward something. Will the next update say it finally calmed down or will it say it shifted again? more dramatically than before? We won't know until we keep watching. And the world is watching. Every clear night. More data, sharper images, refined models. Because 3i Atlas isn't just a comet. It's interstellar. A visitor from another star system. A body that evolved under conditions we don't fully understand. And right now, it's reacting to our sun. Like it's being forced to reveal what it's made of. One shift at a time. 